Sprague, I would like to focus on a couple of areas of your testimony. First, you argue that the site, um, healthcare.gov, really needs a third party uh, working the probe, the system for weaknesses. And second, you assert that medical records are at risk uh, on healthcare.gov, and you list the kinds of damage that can be done with stolen medical records. Um, uh, and you state uh, previously in a post, Huffington Post uh, uh, post, that, uh, uh, quote, uh, however, the U.S. has some, very, some of the very best minds in the world when it comes to cybersecurity, and there is no doubt that healthcare.gov can be fixed if the right people are given the chance to test it. Do you, end quote. Do you still feel that way? Yes, sir. That is one of the reasons why I am here today, okay. because I believe with, with independent third party assessment and the right assessment done, we can get to the bottom of this. Okay. Well, thank you. I just want to, uh, did, were you aware uh, uh, prior to your testimony today that MITRE, Blue Canopy and Frontier Security were all working on third party verification? Uh, MITRE, yes. The others, no. Okay. You were, that, you were aware that MITRE uh, was aware. Um, so I don't understand how, um, you know, uh, in your testimony you, you still assert that third party work needs to be done, but you had knowledge that a third party uh, audit was actually being conducted uh, by yes, MITRE? Yes. One, the <coughs> article was written before that, was written before that time, and two, I do not know if MITRE has finished their research or not or what the findings of those are. Okay, but you did raise this question as if as if third party verification. I was led to the impression that you that third party verification wasn't being done, but in fact you had knowledge it was being done. Not at the time of the article. Okay, but in your testimony you lead us to believe that it, it, you raise it as a as a concern, but you it has quoted, been being done. You quoted the article and you quoted a statement directly from the article that I said that needed to be done at that time. Nothing had been done. But it's but is it's not your in your question. But it, in your, the testimony that you submitted for this committee. Is, is doesn't acknowledge it. But, you, but yet you are telling me here you had knowledge of it, that, that, that it was being done. Your I, testimony leads us to believe that it was not being done. As of this uh, hearing, I do have knowledge. Okay. But you're, but At the you, time of the article, no. Okay. Okay. Very, very well. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Poneman, you talk about uh, the, the, you know, the medical records, uh, you know, and, and identity theft, uh, and a lot of your work has shown that 95 percent of the people who commit these sort of deeds are motivated by Robin Hood motivations. Would you explain about that a little bit? It is not 90 percent, but it is a large percentage. I think it is 29 or 30 percent, but it is still pretty significant. A Robin Hood crime, as we define it in the research, is where um, someone, for example, has a family member or friend who basically has an illness and they are not insured. And basically, they will kind of look the other way, if you will, and allow that person to use their insurance credentials so that when they show up at a hospital or a clinic, they are getting better treatment than just right off the street. Well, common sense would sort of tell me if that is sort of the big motivation, what would motivate someone to go and sure. try to steal someone's identity, that expanding health care coverage, providing quality coverage for more and more people would reduce this, the likelihood of this sort of crime. You have to understand I will be biased in that because I think we all deserve good health care. Um, so if basically you had good health care, the value of a credential would be meaningless, right, because we all have a, we all have a credential. So there is no value, if you will, in stealing someone's credential because everyone is going to have a credential that will give them reasonable health care. So actually if we made this health care uh, website you know, it was very successful, and more and more people got enrolled. The actual, we would reduce the risk of the misuse of medical uh, records. Uh, it it could work one way or another. It's it's really hard to determine that. In theory, you're right. I mean, you could basically say that that 29 or 30 percent, the Robin Hood portion of the crime of medical identity theft might actually be non-existent. So we would but, remove, but we, we could possibly remove a huge motor for people to try to hack into the system. I mean, well, they were trying to yeah, but um, mem remember, the value of a medical record is more than just getting the insurance. You see, that is only a very small part of it. There is a lot of information, rich information. And you know, we have done studies in the Russian Federation and other parts of the world. And if you had to look at the most valuable piece of information right now uh, on an individual basis, it would be a medical record. And in fact, just yesterday in Fox News, Business News, they did an article on the value of different types of information. And medical information <coughs> is in the black market is 
much, much more valuable than, say, credit or debit card information or hmm. authentication data. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dr. And thank you. Thank you.